Also 37-year-old Mary Slaney, 23 years after her first American record, still seeking an Olympic medal. NBC's coverage will continue following your local news. And now, men behaving badly on pregnancy? Right, it's one of the off-limits subjects. Okay. You want to talk about babies? Let's talk about babies. It's not as if we've never discussed this. Kevin, staring at a dot on a stick while you scream, please, God, don't make it pink, is not a discussion. <laughs> men behaving badly, Wednesdays this fall on NBC. The Olympics on NBC10, brought to you locally in part by your Key State's Jeep Eagle dealers, where you can expect the best. By GE, a broadcast sponsor of the 1996 Summer Olympics. At GE, we bring good things to life. By IBM, creators of the official Atlanta Games website. Dear Nagano, Japan, heard you're hosting next games. Would like to build your communications network. Have experience. For references, call Atlanta or Barcelona, Albertville, or Lulong. Lucent Technology. We make the things that make communications work. You're watching Philadelphia's NBC 10. Now from the News Center, this is News 10. Good evening. Thanks for watching this special edition of News 10 during the Olympics. I'm Ken Matz. And I'm Renee Chenault. Here are the stories we're working on for you tonight. A valuable find today in the investigation of TWA Flight 800. Divers located two of the plane's four engines early today in the ocean off Long Island. Investigators said the engines could give them important clues to what destroyed that jumbo jet last week, killing all 230 people on board. So far, 140 bodies have been recovered. In Washington, investigators say the plane's black boxes do not indicate a mechanical problem, and sources now say there's a 90% chance it was a bomb that caused the tragedy. Tonight, tighter security is in play at Philadelphia International Airport. Airline officials are already double-checking and x-raying baggage and questioning air travelers about their identification. There were no major delays on this first day of increased security. Even so, a hijacking drama ends peacefully late today at Miami International Airport. A hijacker claiming to have a bomb forced an Iberia airline jet bound for Cuba to land in Miami. He surrendered without incident shortly after the plane touched down. The passengers were allowed off. Authorities say the suspect is a Lebanese national and the bomb was a fake. For now, the Iberia passenger plane is being kept in an isolated area just as a precaution. It's been one month now since Anne-Marie Fahey of Wilmington disappeared. Fahey, an aide to Delaware Governor Tom Carper, vanished May 27th after going out to dinner at an old city restaurant. She had dinner that night with a prominent Delaware attorney, Tom Capano. Tonight on News 10, after the Olympics, a first-time interview with Capano's attorney. A bridge worker plunges 130 feet into the Delaware River and lives to tell about it. On Wednesday, Michael Jones was painting on the Delaware Memorial Bridge when he made an almost deadly mistake. When he adjusted his safety belt, he tumbled into the river. I just remember probably the impact of the water woke me up. <laughs> and I just started doing a doggy paddle. He paddled away for nine minutes before some fishermen spotted him and took him out of the water. Tonight, M Michael is listed in fair condition. Well, at the Olympics tonight, the popular track and field competitions are just getting heated up. And we have a local diver getting her chance for gold. But the big news in Atlanta tonight is what's going on outside the games. Here's News 10's Vaisa Kahema in Atlanta. It's hard to believe, but it's almost the halfway point of the Summer Games here in Atlanta. Visitors just arriving for the Games were greeted by extra security at Atlanta's Hartsfield Airport. Security guards are already following through on President Clinton's new safety directives. Baggage is being searched more frequently, causing delays for some passengers. Diving tonight starts at the Georgia Tech Aquatic Center. We'll be keeping close tabs on Mary Ellen Clark. The whole Clark family is down here making the trip from Newtown Square, Delaware County, to cheer on this American favorite. It's unbelievable the strength of her character to get to this point after what she's been through. It really says a lot about the person. Mary Ellen has coped with vertigo to return to Olympic form, and a lot of people are here pulling for Tonight after the Games, a Philadelphia group are down here entertaining the crowds on the streets of Atlanta. I'm Vice Seeker Hadma, News 10 at the Olympics. Coming up, the exclusive Earthwatch forecast as this News 10 special edition continues. There's a place in New York owned by the biggest sports stars around. You know, I like to with long hair. And you never know sure. when they'll show up. Long. 
Short. It's the official all-star cafe. Ken Griffey Jr., 301 lifetime average. Where the owners are always willing to help out. Excuse me, it's 302. So if you go, bring the right stats and the right card. Visa, because the all-star doesn't take American Express. 301 lifetime average. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. A British billboard is proving to be a royal pain to the royal family. In Great Britain, the kiss seen around the world after the royal wedding of Prince Charles and Princess Diana is now adorning posters promoting condom use, and it has Buckingham Palace fuming. The British Safety Council says it with, will withdraw the ad if the Queen objects. I'm sure she will. Well, you've probably heard our new promotional slogan, Whatever It Takes. Well, meteorologist John Belaris put it to the test with the help of News Chopper 10. You see, this was John's only way to get back for this special report after he did weather live from Wildwood during our News 10 Down the Shore show today. And still dressed for the shore, meteorologist <laughs> John Belaris joins us now on the Weather Center. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I have some good news though for the good. weekend. If you're planning on heading down the shore, it's going to be a great weekend. Let's take a look at the latest Doppler radar. A couple of isolated showers still left past a few hours. They're dissipating. So up until about 11 o'clock tonight, chance of an isolated shower, then all is clear. Shore cast for tomorrow. Temperatures in the mid 80s. Sun index on a scale of 1 through 10 will be an 8. Winds will be out of the west at 10 to 15. And for Sunday, sunshine, some high clouds developing during the afternoon. Sun index about an 8, but may diminish by 3 or 4 in the afternoon as some of the high cirrus clouds begin to move in with temperatures in the 70s. So your forecast for tonight, an isolated shower ending by 11 o'clock tonight. Then clear sky, 68 degrees. Tomorrow, start of the weekend. Actually, it started right now. Tomorrow, sunshine mixing with patchy clouds. Less humid. Highs around 84 degrees. See you guys in a little bit. I like it. I like it. Okay. Sounds good. Well, of course, that wraps up News 10 for now. We'll be back in just a while with all your news headlines. And be sure to catch up on all the news and the Olympic events with News 10 Today Sunrise, 6 a.m. tomorrow. I'm Ken Matz. And I'm Renee Chenault. Enjoy the games. The Olympics on NBC 10, brought to you locally in part by UPS, moving at the speed of business, and by AT&T, Centennial Olympic Games partner, and by your local Toyota dealer, Toyota, I love what you do for me. From Atlanta, Georgia, host of the Centennial Olympic Games, once again, Bob Costas. I appreciate a formal introduction. How do you do? More track and field ahead. 37-year-old Mary Slaney in the 5,000 meters. But first, it's diving. The women's platform, the American entry span a generation. 33-year-old Mary Ellen Clark, the Barcelona bronze medalist, and 18-year-old Becky Rule. Let's join Cynthia Potter and a guy pulling double duty for us, Dan Hicks. Dan. The Georgia Tech Aquatic Center, for the first time at an Olympics, plays host to all four...